Okay, today we're going to be going over how to set up your own seven days to die server. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you're going to need is the Microsoft Visual C++ 2015 uh, extension packs here. Go ahead and click on download. Like I said, these links will be in the description of the video. Once you click on download, it's going to ask you for the 64-bit and 32-bit version. Download both of them and install them. We're not going to download them because we already have them. So we're going to go into our downloads here. And you can see we have both of them right here. We're going to double click and install them. We've already installed both of them. So just go ahead and install both of them. You need this as a requirement for the seven days to die server because it's an extension for the game. And without this, it won't be able to run. So if you try to do this without these, your game server, uh, dedicated server won't be able to run. So make sure you have that. So once you have that downloaded, like I said, install those two. Once you have that, then you need to go over to uh, developer.valvesoftware.com. And when you get to the wiki page and download the Steam CMD. So once you get to that wiki page, like I said, this link will be in the description as well. You're going to scroll down to where it says download Steam CMD for Windows. Click on the number one. We already have it downloaded again, and we're not going to download it again, but you're going to download it to your downloads folder. Once you got it here, you're going to extract it, extract all. And then uh, you can see it's just a simple exe. We're going to go back. We're going to go to that folder that it extracted here. Right click cut and then we're going to go to the C drive here and then we're going to right click paste and then once you got it into the, your main C drive double click and then double click again and this is going to be downloaded the latest Steam CMD version and any extensions or requirements that application needs to be able to operate now what this software is going to allow us to do is download the actual dedicated game files for anything it can be CSGO it can be seven days to die it can be you know any uh, dedicated server you need you need this to be able to download those files so once that gets done downloading here we'll get started with our batch file so our batch file we've already created so it says here on the desktop um, to create a batch file you can just simply right click on on your desktop go to new and then do text document and we'll just say uh, test batch file here oh. <laughs> not hatch batch um, so click off and you can see that it created us there and I spelled test run oh well um, and you can see well how do we get this in the batch file right so what we can do is go to our view if you don't see the extension.exe then you need to do this so that's what's happening for us so open up the file explorer here go to the view tab and then checkbox where it says file name extensions click on that and you can see now everything's got the extensions like .exe and all that and you can see now on our desktop it says .txt so right click on that rename and we're going to rename that to BAT and that means batch file. So it just wants us to confirm. Yep. And then you can see now it looks just like this one, right? It's a batch file. So we'll go ahead and right click on that batch file. Now we're going to right click on the one we've already created because it's already got the commands we want in it. And you can see it reaches out to C colon uh, steam CMD, which is that folder that we just pasted into our C directory. So you want to make sure you have that. And you can see our steam CMD, not to sidetrack here, but it is now done. Once you see everything's okay, you can go and close out of that. We don't need that anymore. You want to make sure your Steam CMD is in this path. So C colon CMD, and then if you do slash, you can see you got your Steam CMD exe right in there. So that's perfect. So once you have all that, then that's perfect. We're going to do a force install directory, which is going to be C colon seven days I O one. You can see we don't have that folder, but don't worry because this batch file will automatically create it if it's not there as long as you run the batch file as administrator. And then you can see we log in as anonymously, that's fine. And then app date, app uh, update, and you can see our app ID. So this app ID is particularly just for seven days to die, but uh, I think uh, CSGO is like 730 or 740 or something like that, or even if it's a different one now, um, but that's how you would download uh, different game files is this app ID is what you need to know. So this is already set for seven days to die, and it's gonna validate those files and then quit when it's done. So we're gonna go ahead and close out of this. We're going to go to that batch file we created, right click and do run as administrator. And like I said, if you're getting confused and like, well, you just created this batch file, what's what's the difference? Well, we already created the batch file. I was just showing you how to create it. So we can just simply edit both of these files. And what you would do is just copy this command into that test batch file. And it's going to do this exact same thing. I was just trying to get you to create your own batch file. So we're going to go right click on this and do run as administrator. And you can see it's going to go ahead and create that seven days that I owe one folder for us. And it's going to start downloading all those game files in here. Now, once it gets done downloading, you're going to have 
um, it's going to automatically create the startup batch file and everything for us to get going, uh, which is amazing because I think CSGO still doesn't do that. But uh, for seven days that I automatically does that for us. So this is going to download about 15 gigs of uh, <laughs> data. So between 15 and 20 gigs, depending on the update uh, and when you watch this. So give it some time. Uh, go grab some coffee or something. But yeah, it's going to take a little bit depending on your internet connection. So we'll pause it and we'll come back when it gets done. Okay, when it's done, it's gonna go ahead and disappear from your window. That's perfectly fine, that means it's completed. We're gonna go ahead and close out our web browsers here because we don't need that anymore. Now we're just gonna mess with our seven days to dio one folder. So go ahead and click in there. A couple things, you can see our startup batch files here. Um, you're gonna right click on that and then send to our desktop because what we wanna do is just have it quick access for everything. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because it's the same thing as this. But you can see we have our update batch file and then we got our startup batch file. So we'll do, um, name this the startup seven days to die server. For example, if, uh, if an update comes out to seven days to die, you wanna shut off your seven days to die server and then run this same batch file and then I'll update the game files and then you can start it back up again. But keep in mind, I've seen this happen, but it overwrites your server config.xml file. So if you make some changes in here, it's gonna overwrite it. So you always wanna make sure before you update it, to just right click on this and copy and paste it to your desktop just to make sure you have a backup of it. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you a couple things in here. Let's go into your config and edit. Now I'm using Notepad++. You can use uh, just a regular notepad on, on your machine, but I like Notepad++ because it's just easy to read and it gives you the lines and it just shows you everything, right? We went ahead and changed our server name to hosted by IGN, but you can change it to whatever you want, whatever, you know, game clan or anything you're, you're on. The description of the server, you change it here. If you, this is important here, server password. Now, if you don't want anyone else joining your game server, set that server password because then when they try to connect to your server, it's gonna ask them for that password. So you can put that in there. We'll just put in test. Um, the port number, that's very important to know, 26900. If you have more than one server on here, then you would need to change this to like, let's say 26910, or if you have a third one, 29, uh, 26920, and so on and so on. Uh, you always want to go and make sure you're going increments of five because I believe um, seven days that I use is more than just the one nine hundred port, uh, the twenty six nine hundred port. And speaking of ports, we need to open up some firewall rules, right? So go ahead and open up your firewall on Windows. Go to inbound rules. Now we've already created two rules here, as you can see. We created a one for UDP and TCP because you want to open up both uh, port ranges uh, with TCP and UDP. So you can see our ranges here. So to create a new firewall rule and create these on your machine, you just simply right click on inbound rules, create new rule, and we're gonna select port, and we're gonna do TCP, and we're gonna do uh, 26900, and we're gonna go into a range, like I said, because it uses multiple ports. So you should be safe with the 26900 to 26905. So go, once you got in there, go ahead and hit next. Allow connection, that's fine. Everything else is default. And we'll just name the seven days to die um, TCP. So you know that this is only for TCP connections and then hit finish. Now we're, gonna, we're not gonna hit finish because like I said, we've already created that rule. And then you're gonna wanna do the same thing for UDP, right? So your second firewall rule is gonna be port and that same port range. Very important to change it to UDP now because we've already done the TCP. So do UDP now. Same port range, same everything else. And then you just name it seven days uh, to die, uh, UDP. And then hit finish. But like I said, I'm not gonna do that because we've already got both of them here. Now what this allows you to do is, let's say you have a second computer on your same network as your game server, or even if it's on your local machine, now you can connect um, on that same network to that um, server. Now if you want your friend that's in a different state, to connect to the server, doing this alone is not gonna handle it, right? Um, unless it's the server in, you know, at OVH or AWS or somewhere in the cloud, then yes, that's all you would need to do and you give them the public IP and then you're good. But if this is your home network, you need to open up these firewall rules and you need to go into your uh, home firewall, home router, Comcast, uh, Spectrum, whatever it might be, Frontier, and you need to get into that router and port for these same ports from the firewall into your local uh, server here, the local IP address, um, to allow those open connections. Now, I don't know if I would recommend doing that. I like buying something in the cloud and hosting it somewhere in the cloud so it's not your 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 public IP, but you know whatever you want to do. 
I do have a video in the description that explains how to open up ports to game servers. So, you know, definitely watch that video if you're interested in that. So once we got all that done, now we can go ahead and save this config file because we made some changes here. We added the uh, the test password for our password. So if we join the server, the password's going to be test to get into it, which is great because it stops, uh, you know, people, any, anybody just joining it. And then, um, like I said, we changed our server name. There's so many other settings you can change here. I'm not going to go over all of them, um, but I will definitely show you how to become admin in the server. Uh, but you can change your loot abundance. I mean, airdrop stuff, uh, killing mode. I like to change that to um, two because uh, if you do it for three, even if you're allies with someone, you can still kill them. So if two will be uh, kill strangers only, as you can see it here. These kind of tell you exactly what you're changing. So be careful with changing some of this stuff because you don't want to change too much. Um, because it might actually break the server depending on what you do. I've seen that happen before um, but That's usually what people don't know what they're doing uh, In any case, we're ready to start the server up. So go ahead and start that batch file and We should get another console here window here coming up shortly Let's see what happens. Give us some time. Sometimes it does take a minute. Yep. There we go Sometimes it does take a minute or two to come up so you can see we are connecting so and you can see already our uh, name is hosted by IGN now the default would say like seven days die or whatever it is um, But you can see it's already changed that the port number is good We can go ahead and close this batch file once you see this come up So let's now go and launch our client side game and see if we can actually connect to the server All right now that we've loaded our uh, Client game here. We're gonna hit join a game and we're gonna connect to IP now, this is a local IP. This is not our public IP because it's another computer on our same network. So that's why we can do a local IP address here. Same port, hit connect. Now, we should get prompted for a password. There we go. So this is going to be that test password that we set earlier. So you can view that and you can see that's what we set. If we hit submit, then we should be able to connect. Yep, looks like it's connecting okay. So I'm going to pause it here because you know how long this can take to connect. I just went back to the server real quick and you can see I am connecting techno kill. You can see that it's connecting. So let's go back and uh, see where we're at. All right, you can see we are in the server. Um, everything loaded up pretty good. Um, you can see, you know, there's no issues. It didn't give us really any error messages. Now, if you do have any error messages, I would suggest making sure your ports are open. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, well, okay, I'm in the game now. How do I become admin <clears throat> so I can administrate my own server? Great question. There's two different ways you can do this. You can simply add a uh, command in the console window, which is this command here, admin space as space the Steam ID of that uh, user that's in the game, space zero, which zero is the permission attribute, and that will give you full access to the server. Second way to do this is I already have it pulled up. But this is another thing that I want to show you. But if you go into C drive, users, administrator, whatever user, it could be your username or whatever it is. You want to make sure wherever you're running the game server, it's going to be in that user. Then you want to go into app data, roaming, seven days to die, and then saves. Now, if you want to back up your game server, you know, shut down your server, but then you would copy these files and that would be an exact copy of everything you have in the game. So you want to make a backup or whatever, or move servers. That's the files you would need. And you can see an XML file here called server admins. So let's go and right click that and open that in our notepad plus plus. And you can see not much in here, but you can also see users. And this is where you would add um, a user here. So if I just copied this and then went down and put in the Steam ID and all that stuff, um, I don't like doing this because then you got to restart the game server and all that. But if you want to do it just right away, you can go ahead and uh, close, you know, back all that out and then go into your console here and we're going to type in a simple command the one that's right here now i'm going to use and you can go on this space here just paste and of course i'm going to replace my steam id with my actual id and then click add and then we'll go on the game server and see if we have admin access okay we went ahead and typed in our command here and hit enter once we hit enter, it's going to reload that permission uh, file here. So we're going to go back here and you can see up oh, it's been changed. So we're going to hit yes to reload. And you can now see there's a user automatically added that user ID, which is our Steam ID and permission level zero, which is full admin access. So now let's go back into our game. So let's go ahead and open up F1, which brings up our console. And let's type in something called creative menu. 
which will let us spawn in anything we want. Hit on enter, and it does say create a menu on. Now, if you get an error message there, um, that means because you don't have admin access. So if we hit U, if that worked, then you can hit U, and now you can spawn in anything you want, um, a gun or ammo or blocks or all kinds of stuff. Um, but yeah, there you guys have it. That's how easy it is to create a seven days to die server and become admin in that server. And to fly in the server, you can actually hit H and you become no clipped and you can hit the space bar to go up and C to go down and then H again to turn off um, fly mode. So if you want to get onto a building or something real quick, or if you need an administrator or something, you can do that as well. And you can do hold down shift to go faster as well. But there you guys have it. If you have any questions or maybe if I miss something, uh, please leave them in the comments below. But I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.